Okay, we'll start again. I'm still Violet, and I still welcome all of you to church this morning. Um, it's wonderful for you to have joined us. I know it's um, it seems to be a little harder to do when, when our pastor is not here, but we do have a wonderful pastor here today in his place, so I think we'll have a wonderful worship service. Uh, before we begin, what we want to do is clear our hearts and our minds and our uh, our ears to prepare us for hearing and implementing the word of God. So to do that, the best way to clear all those worries and concerns and all of those things that we want to leave behind is to take three deep breaths. Uh, I do a count of three and then I hold it for a bit, like another count of three, and then uh, release it slowly. Take a pause and do it again. So let's all do that three times. Let us begin with prayer. Lord God, we declare your goodness. You are great and worthy of all praise and adoration. You created all things. You are to be honored and worshiped. You are eternal, awesome, and majestic. How beautiful, how dazzling you must be. As we come to you in reverence, Lord God, we see our complete unworthiness to step into your divine presence. We exalt you because you are holy, good and faithful. We praise you because you are love. You are rich in mercy and full of grace. We are amazed that you should bother with us at all. We acknowledge we've defied your holiness and broken your laws. We have wanted to go out on our own way. We confess our sins, forgive us and cleanse us for these wrongs. Purify our hearts afresh, we pray. May we show our gratitude for your forgiveness by leading lives of service, giving ourselves humbly and willingly to serve others in need. Come and show yourself more and more. Come and shine in our hearts even more brightly through Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. So Tom is going to put up the bulletin board, the community news bulletin board. The first, um, first thing we want to remind you is that we do email out faith news every Thursday afternoon. Um, if you're not on that, um, if you're not on that email link, be sure and contact Rachel at the admin uh, email that is on, the, on your screen right now. And let her know that you want to see it. These are really, a, it's a great little bulletin to keep track of what's going on, what might be happening even before Sunday, um, what different task force are up to. You know, for a small community, we're very active. So it's wonderful to be able to keep up on that. And the, like I said, the best way is faith news. We are also in September, which is just a week away. We're going to be putting a new uh, article in each month about the people's names uh, and dates whose birthdays are coming up, but not the year. We don't, we don't want to tell anybody the year unless you want to, but we need to know who's going to be born each month and who has anniversaries and any other special momental days that um, you might want us to know about and to, so that we can offer felicitations and celebrate with you. So be sure and go into the online directory and when you go to your name, you'll have the opportunity to edit. And when you edit, you can add um, important dates. And we'd appreciate you doing that. So um, the next up is Pastor David's anniversary. That is continuing along. We've, you undoubtedly got the email about it. Um, actually, I think it came out with Faith News today or Thursday. So you know that it will be on September 19th. We'll begin at the regular time of 9.30. We'll be partially church at the beginning and then party the second half of the service. It's going to be 
uh, it's definitely going to um, be the definition of weird church because we're going to do a lot of different and really kind of exciting and fun things all in an effort to show Pastor David how much we love him and how much we've appreciated his guidance over the last 10 years. So please make a real effort to attend. Even if you're out of town, you can fight with Zoom. It doesn't really matter where you're at. And we'd love to have everybody come, plus any special guests. And you can pass that along to anybody that you know of um, who might, who maybe attended Christ Church before and might want to come and celebrate with him. We have, um, we've kind of uh, designated insomnia as being our um, meeting place on Saturday mornings at 930. Various people show up and we, you can drive through to get your coffee so you don't have to go inside. Um, or you can go inside and get your coffee. And then we generally meet around the picnic tables, um, which are just to the, if you're facing insomnia, they're just to the left of the, of the insomnia shop. And we meet around 9.30. It's very informal. Um, just whoever's there gets to chat with each other. And uh, we don't, masks are not required. We follow CDC guidelines. Since outdoors, small group, we don't require masks but you can wear them if you want to. We are certainly accepting. We don't look down on anybody that wears masks or anything. So don't worry about that. Um, just come. And if you, if you would like to have a little more social distance, you can always bring lawn chairs and sit a little ways away from the picnic table, but still be able to, you know, chat and visit with your friends. We're finding it, it's, it means so much more now to be able to do that than it did a year and a half ago. So I do hope that you'll join us. And now I want to turn it over to Susie, who's going to give us a church council update. Oh, good morning, everybody. Um, I wish it were a little bit sunnier today, but I think I'm okay with a little bit of clouds. Um, your church council did meet this past Wednesday as planned. Um, and the first order of business was to go over the financials. And the biggest chunk of our time with the financials with Rich, um, our treasurer, was discussing the need for a new treasurer. Rich has done it for a long time and he's ready to pass the torch on to somebody else. I know there was a little article on Faith News about it um, and you can reach out to Rich or myself or to Rachel and we have the job description as well as a, a page that kind of indicates you know how much time we're looking at um, that a treasurer would spend um, and some additional requirements. You don't have to be a CPA or have an accounting degree to do it. Um, it's in QuickBooks, so I think it's accessible to a lot of folks. It is not accessible to me, but I know it's accessible to a lot of folks to be able to do it. Um, so think about that. Think about who you might know um, that would be willing to take on that responsibility. Um, again, they, they can be a member of church council or they can choose not to be a member of church council, um, but that's sort of up on our list of must get done items. And then Rich is there for questions and Rich is there for um, training purposes once we vote on the new treasurer in June. Um, so it's not, if you say, if you know somebody who wants to do it, it's not that they have to start doing it right away. Um, it wouldn't be until next June. Um, the other discussion we had at church council is about how we get everybody in our community involved in what goes on in our church and for us to start working through our list of priorities of things we want to accomplish as a church. So be looking to Faith News in the next, oh, I would say probably month uh, for some additional updates of ways that you can get involved. And in the meantime, um, if you can be thinking about the gifts that you have, the things that you're really good at or you're interested in doing and how you might be able to apply those to your church, and that will help you, I think, figure out what team, what committee, what task force you want to participate in. So think about that. And in the meantime, if you can continue to pray for your leaders that, that, were, that were guiding us all in the right direction and um, letting the spirit move us as we need to. I don't think there's probably any questions. If there are, let me know. Otherwise, Violet, back to you. Okay. Um, we are a reconciling in Christ community um, congregation. We are a faith community that is committed to the welcome, 
inclusion, celebration, and advocacy for people of all sexual orientations, gender identities, and gender expressions. And we strive to work for racial equality and are committed to anti-racism. We have, some people might be joining us this morning or some other day, whatever, um, at our YouTube channel where we have our weekly services and other important um, videos that we post there. They're generally posted the Sunday afternoon or Monday after church. Well, David is out of town on vacation. Those are being held up and he can do them when he gets back. And it'd be nice if we had volunteers who he could maybe coach how to do that. And then he wouldn't have to do it every Sunday because um, he has plenty of other stuff to do on Sunday. Anyway, um, we would like to have some volunteers to help him with that. If you'd like to offer, just let us know. Um, if the people that aren't able to come or maybe aren't even in our state, country or nation, um, they're actually all over the world that they watch and um, it's an opportunity, a way for us to reach out to everybody, but we want to make sure they realize that they are also more than welcome to join us on Sunday morning in our live church it's every Sunday at 930 Pacific time. Um, and we'd love to have you. And I think with that, we are... So oh, I would like to welcome, a very happy welcome, to pra Pastor Christine Kaur, who she was telling us that her children aren't here today, they're off camping. This is typical of children, right? But anyway, we do welcome her and her lovely puppy. Christine, I turn it over to you. Good morning, dear people. I am glad here to be with you here, even though Chris and Rich and Mitch are off doing their own thing. Um, we're going to start our worship and our uh, ponderings this morning with a reading from the book of Numbers, the fourth book in the book of the Torah. This is from the 11th chapter. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad. And the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. And so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men said, my Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to them, are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders returned to the camp. Our gospel reading today is from the 14th chapter of the gospel according to John. We begin with the 15th verse. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you, and in a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. 
They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my father and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, those who love me will keep my word and my father will love them. And we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but is from my father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. This is the gospel of our God. Blessed peace, people of Christ Church, peace, mercy, and grace to you from God, our creator, Jesus, God's only son, and the Holy Spirit who guides and consoles. Amen. I'm very grateful to be with you this morning, and I was honored when Pastor David asked me to step in during this special time away for him and his family until he said, Oh, by the way, I just finished a sermon series, so you're free to pick anything to preach on. No problem, right? Because depending on who's doing the counting, that gives me something like 1,189 chapters, 31,103 verses, and 807, 361 words from which to choose. So I decided to wrestle with one of the biggest and the most splendid, wondrous mysteries in all of theology, the Holy Trinity. The mystery is this. The creator is God. The son, Jesus, is God. The Holy Spirit is God. And the creator is not the son. The son is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the creator. Theologians have been using analogies to try and explain the inexplicable. And each time we try to explain the Holy Trinity by the use of an analogy, we end up falling far short. And we generally, unknowingly, are committing heresy. One such comparison has been to call attention to water. Water is still water, whether it is liquid, frozen, or steam. But this falls short because you might be led to believe that God simply changes from one form to another at different times under different circumstances. This doesn't acknowledge that God is always creator, always son, and always Holy Spirit. The technical term, in case you're interested, uh, for this wrong way of thinking about God is called modalism. Adherents to modalism were condemned by the first council of Constantinople in the year 381. Another such comparison is to refer to the sun, the star, the light, and the heat. But this recalls the heresy of Arianism, which states Christ and the Holy Spirit are creations of creator God and not one in nature with God. Heat and light are not the star itself, but creations of it. You might think Christ and the Holy Spirit are only parts of God rather than God itself. Arianism was declared heresy even earlier in the year 313. The one example many of us are familiar with is the one that St. Patrick used. He used a three-leaf shamrock in his wonderful adopted country of Ireland to talk about the Trinity, although this may be more legend than truth. Nonetheless, using a three-leaf clover to explain the Trinity is partialism, 
And it's another heresy that asserts that the creator, the son, and the Holy Spirit are not distinct persons of the Godhead, but are different parts of God, each comprising one third of the divine. Every single attempt by humans to explain the Holy Trinity have fallen short because the fact of the matter is that the Holy Trinity cannot be comprehended by human reason and is only understood within the mystery of our faith. It seems we must accept that fully understanding the Holy Trinity is simply beyond humans. But we don't have to understand before we confess that we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity. Let me say that again. We don't have to understand it before we confess that this is our belief. We cannot confuse the persons of the Trinity nor divide the substance of the Trinity. We must simply give ourselves over to the inscrutability of God and understand that each distinct person is God and the deity's creator, son, and Holy Spirit are one, equal in glory and co-equal in majesty. We have to give up. We have to empty ourselves in order to gain faith and understanding. So not only are we limited by our humanity and the inability of our brains to respond to this. But the word Trinity is never found in Holy Scripture. So we kind of have two strikes against us when we think about the Trinity. The theological construct of God in three persons is never addressed, except in a bleak manner. We seem to have a more solid understanding of creator God and Jesus the Christ, likely because they have been more easily personified. We all have images of the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel with God with flowing white hair, touching his finger to the finger of Adam to create life. The 14th chapter of John that we just read assures us that in this and every age, we will also have the gift of the Holy Advocate, the Holy Spirit, who will teach us what we need to know and remind us all of the love of Christ. But we don't have the personification of the Holy Spirit like we do Christ and the Creator. But the one who is wise and will comfort, we are told, will come alongside us in each and every moment of our lives, teaching us everything we need and reminding us of God's holy peace. It may be more challenging to begin to understand the Holy Spirit, but we know we have her and perhaps that's good enough. But in reality, the Holy Bible points us to the concept of the Trinity from the very first verse. It's that oblique reference that I keep talking about. The first words of Genesis tell us this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, but the earth became chaos and emptiness and darkness came over the face of the deep. Yet the spirit of God was brooding over the surface of the waters. The Hebrew word for spirit is ruha, which can be translated as breath, wind, spirit, or perhaps most appropriately, breath of God. So our introduction to the Holy Spirit happens in verse 2 of the first book of the Bible. The story we read this morning from Numbers clearly describes God, Yahweh, coming to Moses as Rucha, who then took some breath of God, the spirit, to rest upon the elders, after which they began to prophesy and lead the people. 
And yet the author of Deuteronomy, written in the seventh century before the common era, tells us, hear us, O Israel, Yahweh our God, Yahweh is one. So already we have this idea that there are representations of God, but one God. And this declaration of the Old Testament was affirmed by Jesus himself in Christian scripture. In the book of Mark, Jesus answered him, first of all, the commandments is, hear, O Israel, O God, our God is one. We know all of this intellectually, and yet we cannot ex be expected to ever fully explain the Trinity. Our understandings and the language that comes from our intellect will always fall short. They will always be inadequate. And so I am ended up wondering whether they try to explain the inexplicable and trying to understand the Holy Trinity, which will always be beyond us, be beyond us because we're all human, it may be more useful to look at what the Trinity teaches us. The first thing I think the Trinity models for us is ideal relationships. We can grasp the idea that nothing can divide the three members of the Trinity, creator, son, and Holy Spirit. But we rightly struggle to understand the mystery of the combined Godhead and identity. However, the word, Greek word perichoresis gives us some insight. The word comes from peri, meaning around, and choresis, meaning to give way, to make room. Choresis also is the root word for choreography. Perichoresis can be translated as rotation or going around. Perichoresis might be pictured as a choreographed dance with all members of the dance party moving as one, precisely, fluidly, and with great joy and delight to create a meaningful work together. This is a relationship of glory, generosity, and action focused on each member of the Trinity without losing sight of the entire magnificent relationship. The Trinity also teaches us the delight of diversity. When we name God as creator, son, and Holy Spirit, there is an affirmation that there is an in an eight plurality to goodness. Goodness is not the same as sameness. Goodness, to be goodness, needs contrast and tension, but not perfect uniformity. If creator, son, and Holy Spirit are all God, yet clearly different, we joyfully embrace the difference. We recognize there are at least three shapes to pure goodness and probably way more than three shapes. God's purpose in creation is not making us a uniform glob, but demonstrating an open-endedness to nature. The Trinity also teaches us vulnerability which is a key component to human growth. Those of you who have read the work of Brene Brown know this theory well. In my experience, healthy, vulnerable people use every occasion that they experience to expand, to change and grow, as risky as it may be to live in an undefended space. Yet if we live with vulnerability, we are constantly open to each other and available to give and receive love. The vulnerable life is mirrored in the Trinity. Three, yet one, handing themselves over, emptying themselves out, and then fully receiving what has been handed over. Forces of love throwing, flowing, through, out, and beyond. 
And just perhaps the Trinity teaches us a little something about power. Let's just admit up front that most of us like a little bit of power. We like a little bit of strength and sometimes we like to feel important. We are ego driven creatures much of the time. We admire self-sufficiency, autonomy, and being self-made, especially in the Western civilization. Rugged individualism is imprinted in our culture. So when St. Paul writes, God's weakness is stronger than human strength, we wonder how he could possibly describe God as weak. Weakness is kind of anathema to the American ethos. Weakness is not something we want to model. Humans want to be strong and self-sufficient in our culture, but God's weakness is God's interbeing and interconnectedness, a different way of standing in the world. We want to hold on to our strength, our importance, our egos, but the fact is the mystery of God in Trinity is all about letting go. We admire autonomy, but God's mystery rests in mutuality. We like to be in control, but it seems God loves vulnerability. We like to boast, I know who I am, but we have this God who operates out of an identity given by others. Jesus might say, I am the son only in relationship to the creator and the Holy Spirit. Jesus is partners in the Trinity, give Jesus his being. We admire needing no one, but apparently the Trinity admires needing everyone. We are governed by hiding and protecting ourselves at all costs, and God seems to be in full disclosure. Is it any wonder that the great biblical story arcs emphasize God in glory, showing favor to the lowly and the oppressed, mercy to those who love him, filling the hungry with good things while scattering the proud, throwing down the powerful and sending the rich away empty. Anyway, I guess I ramble a bit, but let me leave you with a poem which is the foreword to uh, Father Richard Rohr's marvelous book, The Divine Dance. One alone is not by nature love or laugh or sing. One alone may be prime mover, unknowable, indivisible, all. And if in everything is all, and all in one, one is alone, self-centered, not love, not laugh, not sing. Two, yin and yang, dark and light, male and female contending dualism, affirming good versus evil and striving toward balance. At best, face to face, but never community. Three, face to face to face. Community, ambiguity, mystery, love for the other and for the other's love. Within other-centered, self-giving, loving, singing, laughter, a fourth is created, ever loved and loving. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Christine. That was a wonderful message. We really appreciate your sharing it with us. We are I'm going to ask everybody to remain muted and sing along with the worship team as they 
in, uh, entertain us with Holy Spirit. lovely thank you so much worship team it was wonderful to hear that song the first um may the peace of the lord be with you all we're now going to 
go into our breakout rooms that will be assigned. Uh, I would like you to keep in mind the following question or discuss the following question. What, if anything, did you hear about the Trinity that surprised you? What other ideas about the Trinity might you want to pursue or look deeper into? Um, there is no contemplation um, video for today. So if you don't care to go into a breakout room, you can just stay in the lobby. Just don't accept the invitation to go in the breakout room. And again, may the peace be with you and have enjoyable visits. Thank you. All quiet. Did you talk about the Trinity? Um, we we're just about to get into that. We just Jane and I were talking about gardening and about uh, our 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 uh, daughters going to tri on trips. So yeah. we the the end of it uh, kind of took me by surprise. All of a sudden, she was gone. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that happens sometimes. Violet, go ahead. Oh. Yes. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Beth. Can oh, you? okay, good. Um, well, we, um, we, uh, Carlene and I were uh, thrilled to be with Pastor Connie, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. And um, we, you know, for me, it just became a, a starting point for a discussion. Yeah. Um, there's a lot more um, to, to talk about, and it would be a great opportunity. Uh, opportunity for us to get together and have a discussion on it. Yes, I think so. Yes, indeed. That's a one that's a wonderful thing about sermons. They often lead to a deeper understanding and even deeper discussion into the subject rather than just kind of um yes. topic, yes. you know. Yeah. Anybody else? Um Okay, we are going to join together now in the congregational prayer. I am going to begin, and as I end a petition, or after you all join in and say your own petitions, each petition should end with, um, God or Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have given us hearts to seek you, hearts that long for you. We recognize that all we have and are comes from you. You are our God and Father. You are the living God. Thank you for giving us the deep trust and confidence in you. Convict us afresh of our sins Turn us deeply back to Christ that we might be completely cleansed. We acknowledge that we are sinners, but we worship you that you have left us in our sins, left us in our sins, but have come to us in Christ to forgive us, to purify us, and to bring us home to yourself. We thank you that you slow down the pace of our life and you quiet our spirits so we can listen to you. Lord, as we meditate on your word and share your heart with us and show us again what you are like, we want to honor your name, enlarge our view of your greatness, stir up in us a deeper and warmer devotion to you. Set us a light to declare the glory of God and the message of Christ. Pour out your grace and mercy, your light and life into us so that we will bring hope to individuals and whole communities. Lord, save us from wanting this experience for ourselves. You want us to reach out through us into this dry world. May your fresh life giving life giving streams of your living water flow out from us into where we live, work, and play. Make us more deeply aware of people's spiritual needs. Work in our offices and canteens, in our schools, colleges, and universities. 
work in Congress and in national and regional assemblies, in our town halls, hospitals, prisons, in our supermarkets and shopping malls, in our banks and insurance offices, in our factories, in our oil rigs, in our buses and trains, in the newspapers and the TV stations. May this be done on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen now to the petitions and hopes, dreams and worries of your people. Pastor Christine. In the mystery and grandeur, we see the face of God in earthiness and the ordinary. We know the love of Christ in the heights and depths and life and death. The spirit of God is moving among us. We will light a light in the name of God who lit the world and breathed the breath of life into us. We will light a light in the name of the Son who saved the world and stretched out his hand to us. We will light a light in the name of the Spirit who encompasses the world and blesses our souls with yearning. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Heavenly Father, there's so much going on in the world in our community that is heartbreaking. And it's hard to know where to even start to pray for. Um, but I pray that you will give voice to our prayers in our actions and how we treat other people. And that it might, the healing of the world might start with us. I pray for your blessings and healing upon the people of Afghanistan, the, the soldiers who have fought to keep the peace and freedom there. Um, I pray that you will be with the healthcare workers who have fought so long um, to heal uh, the nation of, of the, the pandemic of the firefighters who are battling um, dangerous blazes across the country and political division in our own community. Um, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as Beth and I um, go spend some days together with uh, my son and his family uh, out on the beach this week pray for a rich time of uh, peace and joy together and growing in our knowledge and appreciation uh, for one another lord in your mercy hear our prayer lord i lift up pastor david and all of the, the things that they're going through with the wonderful family celebrations and, and being away. Um, bless their time, make it go smoothly, and let them know that you're in control and all things work for good for those that love the Lord. And I lift up my nephew, Dennis, that chemo gets easier for him. I lift up Patrick and my and his family and grandson that was here yesterday, I just pray that his life would smooth out. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayers. eyes of all look to you. 
and you give them their food in due season. You open your hands, satisfying the desire of every living thing. Hear us as we pray in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. We continue with our worship service, and I invite you to bring close your elements of bread and wine that they might be blessed. For the power of love in human life and history, we give thanks and praise. Long ago, our ancestors knew love's power, and they became the tellers of love's tale. Love bound them in covenant, teaching them to live in community with compassion and concern for the poorest among them. Yet centuries of domination and violence shaped a different kind of community based on selfishness and inequality. In the struggle against oppression, Jesus became the face of love, showing us the way to abundant life. In word and deed, he announced love's new reign among us, a reign of justice, reconciliation, and peace. Filled with the courage and passion of love's spirit, he gave his life to challenge the unjust systems of this world. On the night of his betrayal and arrest, he shared a meal with his friends. Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. Gave it to his followers saying, share this bread among you. This is my body, which, was broken for, which will be broken for justice. Do this to remember me. And when supper was over, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it to his disciples saying, share this wine among you. This is my blood, which will be shed for liberation. Do this to remember me. God of love, spirit of compassion, bless us and this bread and wine. May this meal be food and drink for our journey, renewing, sustaining, and making us whole. When we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we experience again the presence of Jesus in our midst. And we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The table is ready with the bread of life for all who hunger and the cup of compassion for a broken world. All are welcome. Come, the feast is spread. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. We give you thanks for this heavenly food. Let it continue to nourish us, body, mind, and spirit. In your name we pray, amen. And now receive the blessing. In the name of creator God, Jesus, God's only son, and the Holy Spirit who is with us always, bless you now and for all the days to come. Amen. 
I invite you to go in peace, to love and serve our God. Amen. Praise be to God.